Hi, this is Ben Lane from OnlineMarketingConsultant.co.uk and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to use Google Alerts. And what Google Alerts is, is it's a way of monitoring new content that's coming onto Google every week or every day if you want. And people use it, some people use it for personal use to follow celebrities or sport teams that they enjoy following. But another way for if you if you run a business it's actually a really good way to keep your website and social media platforms updated by using other people's content and what it does is it, it Google Alerts gives you the most recent content based on your search terms so for example web design for me if I search for web design I could set up so I get an email every week of the most recent blog post based on web design or WordPress or search engine optimization and anyone that's wrote an article on that it will come up in an email to me so let's get started and I'll show you how to use Google Alerts so first just go to Google Alerts and to get there just either Google Google Alerts or go to google.com forward slash alerts or if you're in the UK dot co dot uk forward slash alerts um, and this is where it brings you to I've already searched for social media marketing but I'll show you what that looks like when it's not there uh, so this is what you'll land on um, and my search query is social media marketing because I'm wanting email notifications from Google Alerts for this industry and you can do the same but in your own market I'll show you how to use all of these options um, this is this is actually what you're going to a preview of what you're going to get to your email so this is what it sends you when you search for something it shows you on the right exactly what you're going to get so it shows you the news and how many results they've brought up for the news in the last week um, blogs three results for the, the search that I've done and now I'll just show you how to do this so search for what you're, what you're wanting email notifications about um, if you're wanting to use it for keeping an eye on your competition or your, just your industry to read up about it regularly or if you're using it for the same reason I'm using it for for keeping your social media profiles up to date or getting ideas for blogging so if you can't think of what to write on your blog this is a really good place to go to find some really good ideas on what other people are blogging in your industry and I use that a lot for my blogging. Um, so the next option is search type. And you can change that from everything to news, specifically news, blogs, videos, discussions, books. Um, you can either, if you're just wanting to find people's blog posts, then just choose blog. But I just leave it on everything because videos can be handy for posting on social media pages as well. Um, then you can change your language your region so if you want to find blog posts that have been posted um, in your region so like United Kingdom USA anywhere how often once a day as it happens once a week as it happens I would say it's too often depending on how broad your search term is it's, if it's three f like three words it's uh, once a day or as it happens might be might be okay because you can see I'm not getting loads of results but if it's quite a broad search, um, you might want to just do once a week. And how many, It's this is just telling you how many results uh, you can get. You can choose only the best or all results based on your search query. And I usually just select the only the best results because I only really need one, one to five every week. Every week I get an email. I go scroll down through all the results and it's usually about 10 results I get. I go through them, pick the best ones, copy the URL and share it on my Facebook page. And my Facebook's connected to my, to my Twitter, so it actually shares on my Facebook and my Twitter. And that's how I keep my Facebook page up to date. If I don't have anything to write myself or I'm busy that week, I'll just schedule posts for the rest of the week. So there is something going out there and people can use my Facebook pages as a resource of good, most recent content on my industry and the people that like my pages are obviously interested in what I'm talking about so when I share these blog posts that's giving good value to customers or visitors to my social media channels that are interested in what I do um, how many and then you can change it change your email address to 
um, whatever you can put your, your own email address in. And that's usually how you've uh, you, when you've got when you're logged into Google. You obviously need to have a, a Google account, a Gmail account. Um, that's when you choose your email to where where it will email you to. So you can I, I've got two emails added in here, so you can decide where where you want this email email to. You can also, as you can see, an option for feed. And if you want to have this set up as a feed, it's actually using an RSS feed. So you could, if you if you selected that, what you could do is have it set up in your. It used to be called iGoogle, but there's other options now because iGoogle's now finished. But you can use like my MSN, my Yahoo, NetVibes. There's loads of other alternatives to iGoogle, and what it does is anything that's been posted in the last couple of weeks will show up in your RSS feed section so you'll get the most recent blog posts based on for my example social media marketing um, inside your sort of website homepage so I'm just going to change that to my email so it sends direct to my email and I'll show you what that looks like in my email so as you can see here I've got a couple of emails from Google Alerts and other newsletters that I'm signed up with but this is this is an example these are a blogging one and what it's done is it's email it sends me a weekly update so that emailed me yesterday with the latest news and blog posts on blogging anything that was uh, written on and submitted into Google's index on blogging I've received an email with the latest posts on that and what I do is I just go through this read the most uh, well I choose the the best headline what one's most relevant to be able to post onto my Facebook page or I can use it again for writing a blog post if I want to write a blog post on something I'm trying to get some ideas I'll just go through these and maybe read a couple and uh, choose the best ones if I'm posting for like the week ahead on my Facebook page and Twitter page I'll, uh, I'll maybe pick, uh, open a new tab, open maybe four um, open maybe four posts and then like have a read, a quick read through them decide if they're, they're really good articles to share on my social media platforms and then I'll just show you an example of what I'll do so let me just choose the best one, best title just now Right, I'll, I'll use this because it's relative to my search engine optimization and WordPress course and that's where I'm going to be sharing on my Facebook page right, so I would just have a, a read through this and this is just an article about a theme so if I thought this was a good theme to share with my followers then I would just copy this copy um, instead of placing it right on my Facebook business page what I do is I paste it into bit.ly and that's at bitly dot com um, you can get that there and create an account it's free and you can use that what it actually does is it gives you like stats of how many people clicked on your links so you can actually see what's working and if, if people are even looking at your posts on your Facebook and Twitter page and who's clicking on the links that you've put there. Uh, so re it's a really good tool for if you're just sharing other people's posts but I wouldn't suggest using it if you're doing backlinking for your, uh, your search engine optimization. so when you post a link you want it to be there forever and the only problem with doing that through these URL shortener websites like Bitly this website might not be there forever so if you're relying on other people's websites like uh, URL shortener like this then you've got the risk of uh, disappearing one day but if you do it through your own website that you know that you're never going to take down then that's less of a risk and you can ask your web designer to set things up like that if you're using a, another example would be if you've got an affiliate link set up and you're making money off, an, off affiliate links by sending people to other, some, other people's products and you're getting a percentage of like a commission things like that they're really important links and you don't want to rely on other people's websites staying online forever so I would definitely suggest using your own URL for the purposes but when you're just sharing people's posts bit.ly and the other URL shorteners are fine so I just paste this the URL that I copied into here and now it's popped up with the U the shortened URL to copy so right click and copy on that close 
and then I'll go to my Facebook page and then I'll click on the status right click paste and that'll just load up with the featured image and the yeah so that, that's post uh, that's loaded up the the title of that page and I'm just going to click on go back to my email <coughs> and copy this and click before that link put a wee space in there and this is how I would how I can easily write, put a post out there you could possibly change this to this theme this is a really good theme to use for your WordPress website something like that you you can edit this the, the header for yourself it it's really depends on if the header looks good I wouldn't say this is the best header I'll delete that there WordPress theme So that looks a wee bit better and then I could just post that but what I can also do is schedule posts in so instead of say that I've picked maybe three posts that I want to share on this page instead of putting them all in at once you can schedule them instead and you just click on that wee clock symbol and then you'll see that instead of saying post it says schedule so I can schedule that in I think you schedule it in for up to five months in advance so um, if you didn't have the time to go on Facebook at all, you could just schedule loads of posts in for the next couple of months. Um, I'm just going to say for Friday, you can put in a time, put in 9am. A good time to post on social media pages as well as um, when people are getting back home from work, so around 4 to 6pm is a good time to post as well. I'm just using this for an example and then you click schedule and now that's that post scheduled in um, it'll pop up with what's coming up what's been scheduled and I can view my activity log it says your post has been scheduled your post will be published on Friday the, on Friday and then I'll just go to view activity log so I can see all the posts that are scheduled in to post on my Facebook profile and the good thing about this is when it posts on my Facebook page it also posts on Twitter because I've got them both connected and if you want to do that for your own page if you're not sure how to do that all you do is go to facebook.com forward slash twitter if you go to that page you'll get option to either share your posts from your personal profile or your posts from your business profiles but that's how I share and generate some content for my social media pages and um, you can set up loads of different Google Alerts so I'll just create this one and I'll show you the so you can click on manage your alerts because I've got a few set up already but I'll just click on create an alert or create an alert so that here I've got one set up for blogging content social media social media marketing WordPress blogs and SEO and got them all set up set into English and I've got basically I'm all set up in in the, my right language and the right locations and once once a week because once a week's enough for me because you, if, the more the more you have obviously you get more emails and if you had one set up a day your whole email would get filled up by that so you're better just to have it set up once a week you get an email and at least you're putting the most recent post out onto your social media pages and for when you're wanting to write a blog post you're getting the most recent posts on what other people are posting about to get ideas for your own blog as you can see you can edit the settings if you want to change it to once a day or once a week or as they come and then you can delete them if you're getting too many or if you're if you're no longer needing this update so that's how to get Google Alerts set up thanks for watching Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave your comments below if you have any questions.